So the much anticipated new painting, but strategically placed <laughs> um, with what we've already talked about is the one we've referenced a few times now, the black, white, gray, which are all neutrals, obviously, but still there's interesting contrast. This is black, white as well, but then you have this, this central color is actually brought in by something very different, which is gold leaf. Mm. So, 20, 24 karat gold leaf. <laughs> and was this actually painted earlier and then you did some modifications to it or was this actually conceived this is, recently this all is, new? This is a brand new painting. Okay. And, and this is the only painting I did for this show. And the reason I did it is because I've mentioned the initial um, inspiration, if we can call it that, for these paintings came from this little Fra Angelico that I saw mm -hmm. in like 1989 or something in Washington at the National Museum. And the name of the paint, this little painting is The Healing of Palladia by St. Cosmos and St. Damien. I don't have any idea who any of these people are. Um, I, I have a vague idea of Palladias, but, uh, but I don't really care. But what I, what I did note is that you can tell who the saints are because yes. they have gold halos. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought since, since these saints inspired this yeah. series of work, <laughs> I wanted to do one painting that was a little dedication to them. An homage, okay. A little homage, <laughs> so this is, this is an homage to saints Cosmos and Damien and their gold halos. <laughs> also, I just think, uh, aside from that, it's impossible, as far as I'm concerned, to get gold leaf to go into any painting. It always remains aloof. Oh, yeah. I mean, it just doesn't go anywhere. It is just it, it is what it is. It, which is exactly but why it's they kind of, but used I, gold I, yeah, back in, right. in the why day they, yeah, yeah, right. for halos. But I, but I do, um, I'm very, very fond of this painting. I don't know, I, I, just, I just really like it um, for some odd reason, even though the gold sits in its own world, maybe because the gold sits in its own world. Anyway, that's my story about that. Yeah, and the scale of this one, I think, too, and the fact that this, the gold center, because of the proportions of everything, are perfect squares. Yeah. In, in yeah, surrounded are, by rectangles. So yeah. it almost makes this quasi -anth anthropomorphic. <laughs> <laughs> like a pair of eyes and a nose. Look at it. Okay. I think this is the end of. <laughs> <laughs> I just did that to drive you crazy. <laughs> it worked. It worked, yeah. <laughs> but here's another one, though, that you'd mentioned uh, when we were talking about the other uh, jade uh, painting. Um, and well, I guess it's like charcoal or sort of a black over there. The, the, the really, really subtle yeah, one. This, this one is even like more good. subtle. Yeah, this is really subtle. This is green, deep red, yeah, deep. And, and a neutral mixture of those two colors. Yeah, it's, and you can really not even hardly see the green except against the red, the contrasting of, of red. So it's very interesting. So yeah, it takes this one into a different realm as yeah. well. So that's what's really interesting. Um, how um, the form um, is consistent in the compositional structure and, and, and approach is, is the same. But what it really shows is um, the power of the, the color, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, um, it, it, it's uh, it, it, in the range of what you can get with color. It's just incredible when you think about that. And that was actually, when you think about it, it is not crazy because that's what Downing and Davis and all these color field painters using dots and squares and, mm -hmm. you know, Larry Poons and, you know, with his mm -hmm. <laughs> earlier sort of dots mm -hmm. and little ovals and what have you, uh, using that as just a, as a vessel for color to experiment and play with color. Right. And, and after image and all that stuff. Yeah, but I think what's more subtle, these are more subtle because of the fact that they're canvas filling. They're not isolated elements. Right. So they're not <coughs> floating. They're not disconnected. They are connected, interconnected. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, but there's just something about these. They, uh, they are vessels for color, which you clearly have done. But in this exhibition, 
but I think because of the compositional selection mm -hmm. and the scales, I think that is what it, it, you know, it takes you in a different realm with the color. Mm -hmm. The color is what changes all that and dictates sort of how you react to that form, which is I very interesting. That's very true. Mm -hmm. it, had you, was that sort of a contemplation? Well, I, I began to see it. Or are these know? empirical? No, and, and, I began to see it. And one of the yeah. things I began to see was that um, in a white space, my, my studio is white and most galleries are white. Um, a small painting like this is really hard for your eye to see because mm -hmm. it, it's fighting with your, your irises want to close down because of the white. Yeah. And they want to open up for the dark. So I, I wanted this scale because then you you can stand in front of it and gradually your eyes physiologically will adapt. Right. Yeah. No, that's a good point. And this in a neutral, more neutral sort of. Um, it's nice on a gray wall, grayish yeah, wall. Grays yeah. or even uh, you know sort yeah. of uh, ivories or something, whatever. Something. Something. It'll. Yeah. It'll definitely meld it out a right. little bit more. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, yeah. it can be on. on but I think that's actually very interesting. Um, <coughs> so this is a good chat. Um, it definitely makes me want to have a, a part two to the essay because. Um, captured a lot of it from what we, but, but talking to the artists is always really good. And then also just spending more time engaging with them and hearing you kind of talk about them. You really do see that, I mean, I, I noted that this is really about color, but you really realize um, these more subtle ones become much more telling in terms of, and it really elucidates mm -hmm. that power mm -hmm. because you, you're just, you're, everything's on the edge now. Mm -hmm. It's it's not as obvious. Right. It's, it's sort of really teetering. That's what I think. This is a, kind of the beginning of a change in my relationship with painting, mm -hmm. which has become, I guess, you know, more subtle. <clears throat> Maybe. Yeah, and I'm always fascinated. You know, everybody. You know, it's like when um, a lot of artists. You know, I, what, you know, it's like trying to get out of you. Sort of like. It's sort of, I like to get to this, you know, what's really the nugget behind everything. Because you, you don't do these just for the heck of it. And it's like, you know, it's not just <laughs> another 10 paintings, no. you know. And that's what's really great when you can, um, and especially an older body of work like this and still yeah. see so much of it and, so, and the range yeah. of it. Because a lot of times, you know, all, the, all of one thing sells or another or whatever, or, you know. It, and so it's great to be able to see this because now you see this whole array mm -hmm. of, of how, you know, this sort of fell out. But it sounds like to me, you, you had a plan, but you didn't realize the impact you were going to get. So these really became right, sort of yeah. empirical. No, it, it, it evolved. And as I said, a lot of the paintings that are sort of in between mm -hmm. uh, in the, this development are not here because they're gone. They're, mm -hmm. you know, been sold or... Mm -hmm acquired somewhere but um so they really did become an experiment and i'm glad now to know that those came first and then these came later um that makes a lot more sense so yeah very successful i like them thank you thank you very much